world. So I'm going to go ahead and start the recording and I'm going to get us started. Uh, I know we're over 60 people. I'm probably expecting a bit more and we're just going to dive right in. Uh, welcome to ProCon membership peer community session. Um, today we're going to be taking members from the on hold to let's go, re-engaging members and welcoming past members. If this is not the session you want to be in, this is your chance. You can leave this session, go back to spot me and get into the session you were looking for. Um, if you have any question about that, you could, you could chat, uh, you could chat me in the, um, you could write me a note in the chat and I can help you navigate that. Uh, my name is Sue Gelsey. I'm the chief program officer at JCC Association of North America. And joining me on the call today is my colleague, Cindy, Re Cindy Rebner, who's the executive assistant at JCC Association. Our names appear in chat um, towards the top of the list as hosts. So if you have any questions or concerns during the course of our time together today, you could chat one of us privately and we will respond to you. Um, also, I wanna make note that this session is being recorded. Um, we hope everyone is comfortable with the recording and could stay on camera. If you're not comfortable being on a recording, you could turn your camera off, um, but we hope you still stay with us uh, in the program. And uh, it, overall, we want you to be comfortable. We want you to feel um, that you belong here at the ProCon 21. That, and we are in general working to build really inclusive spaces. So we want you to feel welcome, safe, respected, and fully included. So towards that end, I invite you to change your name as I have changed my name uh, in, in my Zoom name. You could do that in the, the three dots in the upper right-hand corner of your, of your box or in the participant list. You could change your name. I invite you to put your first name, last name, the organization that you work with or for. And then uh, if you want to include your personal pronouns, you could do that in the name as well. Um, and you can use mine as, a, as an example of, of how to go ahead and list all that out. We've also enabled uh, the live transcript closed captioning for this session as we have for all of our sessions. Uh, you could see that at the bottom. You could disable it on your own computer by, um, by hitting the live transcript button, but we have it activated for everyone and for the recording. Um, and beyond those items, if there's anything that Cindy or I could help you with, go ahead and you know send us a note in the chat. Uh, one more general announcement. Um, we are incredibly thrilled to be offering this professional conference. Uh, we have over 3,000, yep, 3,000 participants registered for the professional conference. We are just about at 100 participants in this session. Oh, there we are. 100 partic participants in this session. We expect most of our sessions will have over 100 participants. And this was all made possible through the generosity of our sponsors. And I, I'm not saying this as a way to sell you anything. I'm saying this for you to understand that this entire conference is at no cost to any JCC and at no cost to any professional. And that is because of the 35 sponsors who have generously supported the JCC movement to make this possible. I invite you to um, show them the gratitude um, by visiting the virtual vendor hall in SpotMe and participating in the live vendor hall uh, later today and on Thursday. We'll tell you more about that at the end of the session. Um, but I just wanna continue to thank uh, those folks and, and for you all to recognize that they've made this possible for everybody. So thank you. Thank you to our sponsors and thank you all for, for supporting them. Um, so in today's session, we're gonna start with a little opportunity to get to know one another. We'll have a little bit of social time together because what's a conference without a little bit of social time? Um, then we're gonna dive into our content about relationships, about member engagement. And then we will dedicate time to breakouts where we're gonna learn with and um, uh, from one another. We're gonna share from our own experiences and we're going to uh, engage and learn from the experiences of others. So we have a full 90 minutes uh, together and I could not be more excited. Um, so I think you've probably have heard plenty from me for today, or at least for right now, you'll hear more from me later, don't you worry. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and move us along in our program. Um, I'm gonna welcome Jody Hotra, uh, who's the membership director at the JCC Central New Jersey. 
Uh, Jody is a JCC lifer. She went to preschool and grew up going to and working at JCC Metro West. I'm going to uh, add her to the spotlight with me. Um, and then 21 years ago, she joined the team at the JCC of Central New Jersey and has, roles, has had roles as after school director, youth and family director, camp director, and now is the membership director at the JCC. Uh, Jody's going to guide us through the beginning of our program, and uh, I will see you all soon. Jody, the floor is yours. Thank you. So. Hi, everyone. As Sue mentioned, I am a JCC lifer, and I have been through many different uh, roles at the JCC. Um, my most recent one is now membership, but I was a camp director. And so what is a conference without a little icebreaker to get to know each other? So I'm gonna throw my camp hat back on for a little bit. And we are going to go into breakout rooms of about four or five people. And we're gonna play a game called Two Truths and a Lie. Some of you might have already played this once before, um, but you need to start thinking now of what your two truths and a lie will be. Obviously make it something that you are willing to share with your, your group. And in your breakout session, someone's gonna have to take the lead and, and get the ball rolling. Um, but each person is going to present their two truths and a lie, obviously not in whatever order you want to do that. And the group is gonna have to figure out what your lie is. So um, feel free to um, have a discussion about what your lie is. Feel free to uh, have a discussion about your truths. Hopefully you will uh, find someone in your group that has something in common with you. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but with that, we're going to go right into our breakout rooms. We have about 10 to 12 minutes to do so. So hopefully you'll allow everyone in your group to, uh, to be able to share. So we're going to kick over to our, um, our breakout groups now. All right. Thank you, Jody. Um, Cindy just put uh, hang on one second, let me get myself back up here. Um, Cindy, put the instructions into the chat. You're gonna be in groups of about four. If you find yourself in a group with a colleague from your own JCC, leave the room, come back to the main room and we'll assign you somewhere else so that um, you can meet new people. You already know the people you work with, I hope. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and send everyone to a room now. Come back to the main room if you have any questions or you want a different room. And we'll see you all very, very soon. So welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a lot of fun playing Two Truths and a Lie. We definitely did in our group. Learned a lot about each other. We even had a little bit of spare time to meet some people, uh, talk about more, um, more than just our Two Truths and a Lie. Um, but hopefully that helped break the, break the ice and get us ready for a great ProCon 2021 virtual. Back to you, Sue. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Uh, hang on one second. I'm going to add my little, oh, I can't. I don't know why I'm not able to do this. All right, spotlight. Thank you so much, Jody. Um, that was an awesome exercise. Um, and I know some people came in in the middle of it, um, but uh, uh, hopefully you were able to still join in, meet a few people. And just like a conference in real person, um, you can go ahead and reconnect with the people you just met um, through our platform. You could uh, hopefully connect with them via email or phone later on and uh, continue to widen your network of colleagues that you can uh, reach out to um, during the year. Now we're gonna continue forward um, again with gratitude for, to Jody for organizing that for us. Um, I now am really excited to welcome Leslie Myers, who's the Senior Director of Community Center Relationships for EXOS. She was previously the Executive Director of the Shames JCC on the Hudson in Tarrytown, New York, um, and had previously had JCC experience at the Kaplan JCC on the Palisades, where she was stuck working with me for some time, um, and also the 92nd Street Y in New York City. She has over 15 years of experience um, in the fitness business industry, and she has long specialized in JCC growth and success. And she's worked with over a dozen JCCs in various capacities. Leslie combines her deep knowledge of the Jewish community with the passion for health and wellness. And is a, I know this from first ex, firsthand experience, is a compassionate leader. 
and I could not be more pleased to have her leading our session today about relationships, about membership experience, and about engagement. These are perfect topics for Leslie to be our, our leader on. Um, during much of the session with Leslie, we're going to disable the chat so that you're able to focus completely on, on uh, the session itself. You will still be able to chat with any of the hosts, so you could still contact Cindy or me if there's any questions. Um, and then there'll be an opportunity for you to contribute feedback in the chat or to ask questions and we'll, we'll re-able it. <laughs> we will once again make you able to use the chat function. There'll also be a Q&A opportunity at the end. You'll either be able to do that in chat or use the raise the hand feature to, uh, to ask your questions live. And now I will bring Leslie on for the rest of our, uh, for, this, for this next period. Leslie. Hi, everybody. I'm so, so happy to be here today. Sue, thank you for the kind introduction. And I'm mostly, I'm so happy to see all these familiar faces from JCCs that I've worked with. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. And thank you for um, participating in Procon. This is an exceptional experience. So many of you who know me know that I like to start my sessions with a moment of mindfulness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to put down your pens, to turn your phones face down, to take a minute to notice both of your feet on the floor, sit upright in your chair, close your eyes if you like to, fold your hands in your lap, and just take a moment to be fully present in this moment. This is a magical moment for us all to be able to be here through this incredible platform, through the incredible planning of our ProCon folks. So let's just be here, be present, take a deep breath, bring our mind into our hearts, our hearts into our bodies, our bodies onto the earth and fully be here and arrive in this moment. Thank you so much. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. Just give me a thumbs up, Sue, that we are good to go. Fantastic. One of the most common challenges that JCCs face today is not knowing how to support our community during this time of great uncertainty. How do we continue to be the safe space for healing and well being after this time of great challenge, challenge and separation? And how do we ensure that when ready to return to their daily lives, people will choose our JCC? Over this last year, we have experienced a lot of hardships. Our communities have reduced in size. Anywhere from 40 to 70% of our members are on hold. Many of the members that have remained active are not currently engaged, and we have high cancellation numbers. Second, our staff communities have faced unparalleled strain. Furloughs, terminations, resignations have become the norm. And that has had a serious emotional impact on the well being of those left to keep the organization running. There are fewer of us working, and we hold more responsibility than ever for the survival of the organization. We are stressed, some of us are tired, and we're dealing with many, many unknowns. And finally, our organizations are having an existential crisis. Who are we? Who will we become? And what will the future hold? These questions that our leadership and our board of directors and our movement are facing are serious and deep. And how will we survive is the question that is heavy on our hearts and minds. The intention is to provide for today is to provide a holistic approach to engagement that supports the community's mental, physical, and spiritual well being, and that impacts their lifelong commitment to your JCC. I believe that the solution to these challenges is to transition from a transactional way of engaging with our community to a transformational way of engaging with our community. JCCs are more than a sum of its parts. 
we have the ability to bring deep meaning and inspiration into people's lives. This is our differentiator. In this presentation, we are going to explore three different ways to trans transform the lives of our members to build lifelong engagement. We're gonna look at building meaningful relationships. We will discuss how to build these relationships based on compassion and authentic connection. The second, Creating an exceptional member experience, we are going to reflect on the values of your organization and the ways to bring those values to life through our behaviors. And the third is we will talk about a holistic engagement solution. We're going to look at new staffing models, how to build the member journey, and how to build the member journey for maximum engagement. So I'm going to take a moment and introduce you to my mom and dad. This is Susan and Stephen Myers on their 50th wedding anniversary about four years ago. And these two, these two people touched my life so deeply, obviously, but they are the perfect example of a couple that has had lifelong engagement with their JCC through volunteerism and wellness, through um, arts and culture and lectures, They've been members of the Richmond JCC for probably over 50 years. And they are a true gift to me and a true example of what I feel like we're trying to create at our JCCs. The biggest gift that they gave to me was that they adopted me almost 45 years ago. This is me in my JCC nursery school class. Can you see which one is me? Can you tell? right here with the white blonde hair. And I can tell you that I'm, all, I'm friends with most of those people in that class to this day. This was my JCC nursery school class. And through technology, through this crazy world, I've been able to connect with these people. This is Mrs. Koch. Unfortunately, I'm sure she's probably not around anymore, but she'd be very proud that I'm speaking at JCC ProCon right now for sure. So the reason why I bring this up is because this is my inspiration for this talk. And when I think about lifelong engagement, when I think about membership, I think about what kept them engaged for so long. And this is what we're going to talk about. JCCs make the world a better place. We have the opportunity right now to re-examine what membership means at our JCCs. When you work at the JCC, you're part of something bigger than yourself. You're part of a movement of inclusivity, service, and compassion. JCCs transform lives through relationships, programs, and services. And membership is the first touch point in building a relationship between prospective members and the rest of the JCC. You, all of you on this call, play a critical role in understanding what is important to each member or prospective member and aligning them with the values of your organization. We are here to be of service to the community. Membership is not just about a physical place. It is about belonging to an organization that matches your values and inspires happiness, joy, and belonging. In addition, JCCs not only give members access to programs and services, their dues support the JCC and helping and serving the broader community. This is our value proposition. This makes us different than anyone else. And membership is the first touch point. So let's dive in, building meaningful relationships. Coming out of this year, there's a tremendous amount of fear and concern, hesitation, and trauma. Our community needs to know that we are here for them, that we are providing them with a safe space to return to, and that we can offer them support through a wide variety of programs that meet their, need, meet their needs mentally, physically, and spiritually. Surveys from across the field show that our members on hold are looking for our patience and understanding. They're looking for a safe place to come back to after a year of separation and isolation. They are hesitant to come back, but we can't rush them. We have to remember that they are still part of our community, even if they're not actively engaged on site or online. They have stuck with us this long. So it's important for us to keep our connection and stay connected. Building, with our, building relationships with our community, regardless of their current level of engagement, is essential. 
So let's talk about building meaningful relationships. The first thing that we have to do is we have to be able to ask the right questions. We have to bring curiosity, asking people how they are, how are you doing? What is your life like right now? What is happening for you? Whether this is via email or via in-person or virtual, asking the right questions to spark a connection is essential. Second, we have to keep our questions open-ended. We have to allow people to share. Where our goal is to build rapport, we have to allow people to share their lives with us. Go deep. Don't be afraid to ask the hard questions and get to know each other. We've all been separate, and that's not what community is about. So go deep. Don't stop at one. Keep asking. Seek to understand. Seek to know each other. And be genuine and sincere. Second, once you've asked the questions, you have to be able to listen deeply. Be patient and relax. There is nothing more important than giving someone your undivided attention. When you're on a tour, when you're talking to someone on the phone, be patient and relax and lean into the conversation and listen deeply. Pay attention and remember. Take notes after you've had a conversation so that the next time you see that person or interact with that person, you can refer to things that they've said, things that they've done, things that they've shared with you. Remember, when they share something with you, that is them giving their attention to you and giving their, their heart to you. Use active listening. Repeat what you're hearing. Make sure that you understand. And ask clarifying questions. Make sure that that person feels heard and seen. Finally, we need to respond appropriately. We need to mirror and match what other people, the energy that they're giving us and the energy that they're providing. We need to communicate clearly and often. This is through marketing. This is through um, signage. This is through all of the multiple forms of communication that we have. We need to be empathic. We need to understand that, that people are where they are. And what's most important is that we're being empathic and, and connecting. And finding a common ground. Commonality is what brings us together. Finally, be reliable, consistent, and kind. Asking the right questions, listening deeply, responding appropriately, this creates opportunities for compassionate action, which leads to meaningful relationships. So what is compassion anyway? Compassion is the capacity to attend to the experience of others, to feel concern for others, to sense what serves others, and to be able to be of service to others. Compassion at its heart revolves around connectedness and relationship. Our ability to be able to meet our members and the larger community with compassion is the most important and the most impactful action that we can take. Being able to really attune to another person's experience is a priceless gift that you can give that has a significant impact on their lives. It is our responsibility as membership folks to seek to understand the people in our community and to determine the best way to support them during this time. Here are some compassionate questions that you can ask. How have you and your family been affected since COVID? What's something that you miss that has surprised you? How are you taking care of yourself these days? Is there anything that you wanna change? What are the things that are meaningful to you right now? This has probably changed for people over the last year. What's meaningful, you, for, meaningful for you today? And finally, how can the JCC support you and your family during this time? And then of course, we listen and we respond appropriately. The next key thing about um, building compassionate relationships or building meaningful relationships, lead with authenticity, let your light shine through, be yourself, speak your values, live your truth. We, you are employees of the JCC because you wanna be a part of this community. And hopefully your values align with the values of the JCC. So be yourself. Be present and bring your whole self to your work and to your relationships and to your, to your um, prospects. Greet with kindness and enthusiasm. Smile and make eye contact. Share your story and your heart. 
Don't be afraid to bring who you are to work every day. That's why people are here. You have the ability to impact lives around you. Many members are at the JCC because of you. If you look back at that little girl in that picture with the blonde hair, the one person that I remember the most of my JCC experience was Mary Lou. Mary Lou taught me how to swim. And I will never forget Mary Lou because she took care of me and I had a connection with her. And I remember her to this day. So make sure that you are, that, that you are aware that people are joining and connecting because of you. Okay. Next thing is creating an exceptional member experience. Simply put, member experience is how someone sees, uses, and interacts with your JCC. Designing a member experience that speaks the values of your organization is key to attracting and engaging with our community. So in order to build the experience, we must first understand the outcomes we are trying to achieve. Intentionality. We do that by asking ourselves these questions. What do we want our community to feel? What do we want our community to remember once they leave the JCC? And how do we, how do we create a feeling of belonging? By asking these questions, by asking these questions, you are going to be able to better create a member experience to address these needs. So I'm gonna actually ask, we're gonna pause right now, and I'm gonna ask us to open up the chat. Cindy, if you wouldn't mind opening up the chat. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask the question, how do you want your community to feel? How do you want the people in your community to feel? So if someone could read off some of the answers, that would be fantastic. I'll do that, uh, Leslie. Thank you. Um, I got to go back. They're coming in quick. Hold on. A sense of belonging, welcomed, welcomed, um, safe, at home, inclusive, accepted. We want them to feel like they are coming home. Always able to question without worry, accepted, safe, safe to take risks, united, taken care of, lots of safe, uh, cared, included a place for everyone, a home away from home, like family. I want them to feel comfortable and cared for. They are, they are home and we're glad to see them. Welcomed and excited to return to the JCC. Welcoming back, comfortable, warmly welcomed, connected, safe, validated, sense of family, valued, safe, like they belong here valued and welcome, heard and respected, safe, welcome and cared about, thought of, proud to be part of it, no fear and safe, part of a family, safe and welcomed, visibility, to feel valued and the JCC is their second home, connected, valued, excited to be back, part of the family and understanding, included, like, like your story to create long-term positive memories, valued mm -hmm. and included, safe, strong, mm -hmm. growing. Oh, so beautiful. I mean, look, like if that's what we want people to feel, then that's what we need to attract, right? Like we need to know that people need to know that this is, this is the place for them. I had a, I wanna tell a quick story. The other day I was at a JCC and I was talking to one of the membership representatives there. He said he had just gotten a call. This was a couple of weeks ago, right after that horrible shooting um, of the of the Asian women at that massage parlor. And he said he said that the woman called and she said that she wanted to sign her grandmother up. And she was Asian and she wanted to sign her grandmother up because it was the only place that she felt safe. It was the only place that her grandmother could go to a community center to for wellness for health because that's, that's where she felt safe. The word safe came up many, many times. And that's so, that's so important. We want people to feel safe and belonging. Beautiful, beautiful answers. So now that we know what we're trying to get people to feel, we can talk about bringing our values to life to be able to attract the people that, that to be able to attract members based on our values. In order to bring them to life, we have to know them. 
We have to understand what our values are. We have to build our experience around those values. And then we have to align the values with the members of the prospective members of our community. And finally, when we do these things, outcomes will follow. We will see individual transformation. We will see lifelong member engagement and we will see participation in a variety of programs, as well as of course, a better bottom line, increased revenue and donations. So let's talk about, well, here first, I just wanna show you, these are all of the things, many of the things that you said here are what are, we want our community to feel. Right? So now we look and we talk, make sure we're on the same page. What are values? We all have values that determine our actions and decisions. When we know our values, speak our values, and live our values, we are able to self-actualize. We are able to become more of who we are meant to be in this world and live a life of purpose and meaning. Like us, most JCCs have a set of values that allow them to bring their mission and their vision for the agency to life. The programs and services at the JCCs represent those values. So values are essentially, as I mentioned, they help us decide the sort of person that we wanna be, the manner in which we treat ourselves and others and our interaction with the world around us. So our values distinguish us from everyone else. That's again, our differentiator. What are the values of your JCC? So why don't you go ahead and post in the chat, who knows the values of your JCC and go ahead and list them. Sue, can you go ahead and read those from the, as they're coming in? Sure thing. Thank you. Jewish, innovative, pioneering and collaborative. Inclusivity, inclusion, compassion, community. To build a welcoming Jewish community by inspiring and enriching Jewish identity. Our values, excellence, exceeding expectation in leadership, staffing, operations, programming, and service. All are welcome. Inclusivity, love, kindness, compassion, family. Everyone is welcome, unconditional. Be there for all, connection, connecting families to Jewish life, enriching lives and building community, open and accepting to every single person, enriching lives by connecting people, building an experience, welcoming and inclusive. Has Nasat Orhim, we are welcoming, inclusive, and nurturing. We invite all to join us in making connection and lifelong community building community, Kihila. We build on the strength of community and we seek to cultivate a sense of belonging in all we do, enriching mind, body, and soul. Ha'ashara. We keep individuals, individuals live a physically intellectual, sorry, we help individuals live a physically, intellectually, and emotionally healthy lifestyle. Passing on Jewish Beautiful. culture and history, Medor Lador. Beautiful. There's, there's more, but. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, and we can and we can keep going. I think that um, I mean, it's it's amazing. It speaks a lot to everyone on this call who has a deep understanding of the values of their organization. Um, what I would offer is that if you're not clear about the values or the mission of your organization, please go to your organization's website. If you go to the About Us, you can learn about the mission and the vision and the values of your center. And that is again, when we think about holistic, when we talk about Working with people mentally, physically, spiritually, we have to think about them as whole people. Um, and so that's really what we're going to be, you know, what we're talking about here. Once we know about our values, once we understand the values, we are going to build our member experience around those values. We're going to align those values with our community and prospective community. And that is transformational growth versus a transactional relationship where they're coming, they're paying for something and they're getting something else. We're looking to transform people by engaging them holistically. So now we're going to assign behaviors to these values. So if these are examples of our values, I heard a lot of these in, in what Sue was reading out. We have community, we have integrity, quality, respect, responsibility, safety, tikkun olam. 
We're going to assign behaviors to these values. Ask questions and listen deeply to build community. Follow through, deliver excellent customer service. Be kind and compassionate. Take ownership and use I. Know your safety protocols and volunteer your time in service of others. Essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the values and you're going to train each other and your staff and your community to live those, live those values through your behaviors. And that only then will your community feel supported, wowed, seen, valued, safe, connected, inspired, and vibrant. All right, so our goal is to design the member experience that speaks to the shared values of the JCC. Now we're going to switch to or dive into our holistic engagement solution. The holistic engagement solution uses new staffing models, technology, and a designed engagement journey to reach our community in a new and innovative way. It is no longer okay for us just to hope that our members will participate in multiple programs and assume that they know about them and want to be in them. It is our job as membership folks to build these models, build these opportunities for them, to guide them there. We must build staffing models and create pathways to encourage multiple points of engagement. New staffing models. So we use something called the engagement assistant. And the engagement assistant is an AI solution that helps to generate hot leads using emails and text messages. We'll talk about that in a minute. We've created member experience teams which provide opportunities for membership sales and customer service to come under one umbrella to be able to really speak the values through and through, not just through membership, but through every point of engagement with our staff. Cross-departmental ambassadors, creating a team of people across the entire agency that speak the values and live the member experience initiative is key for us to create that cross-collaboration. So like I said, the engagement assistant connects with the community, pursues leads, creates abilities for a prompt response and promotes all aspects of the JCC. And then finally, we have the engagement journey. We're gonna talk about creating a horizontal experience, not a vertical experience of engagement through journey mapping and bundling programs. So staffing models, we talked about the engagement assistant, member experience team, cross-departmental, this is the engagement assistant. And I don't know how many of you have heard about the AI and technology and these sorts of things, but we have done a lot of research and we've actually rolled this out in one of our JCCs. Um, and to be honest, it's, it, it's been incredibly accessible because the skills that the engagement assistant has the ability to do is pursue prospects, reactivate prospects, onboard members, retain at-risk members, cross-sell programs, and win back members. Essentially, this person, the engagement assistant, which is AI, takes the dirty work away from the membership folks and lets you do what you're really meant to do, which is build that connection. The engagement assistant focuses on outcomes with focus on new member acquisition, reactivation and member usage, increases engagement by funneling leads from all programs throughout the, throughout the JCC, and funneling them into different programs. So essentially a worker bee that connects through all of the different programs to help generate cross collaboration and cross engagement. And then finally, this is probably one of my, my top reasons why I love this assistant, works 24 seven. So at any time, this engagement assistant is sending out emails to connect with your community and to then the responses help them identify hot leads, which then funnel to membership or member experience, the membership experience team. Second, we're gonna talk about the engagement journey, holistic member engagement. We are gonna create a horizontal experience. So essentially it is time for us to get rid of the silos. There's no more staying in one lane. A fitness member, normally right now will come in and the fitness member stays in all of the fitness spaces, does the programs and services of fitness. Um, maybe they go to the aquatics, maybe they go to um, sports and rec, but they're in fitness. 
no more of that. We're going to intentionally focus on moving, moving people across all departments and engaging them holistically. And here's how we do that. So for example, we have a fitness member, okay? We're going to create a journey map and the journey map is a visualization of the process that a person goes through in order to accomplish a goal. The goal in this case is to reach a member by creating multiple touch points and increasing lifelong engagement. So if a fitness member comes in and we know that they take a yoga class, we're gonna make an assumption that if they like yoga, maybe they like meditation. Maybe they would appreciate going to a meditation workshop or a retreat. Maybe then we bring in people to speak and do a lecture series on meditation and access some of the key people in our community that lead these kind of lectures. Maybe there's a book club, a nutrition talk, mindful cooking classes, spirituality-based classes. So see what you're doing. You're taking someone who's come through one portal of the JCC and you're intentionally trying to plug them into things that align with their values and interests. Here's another example, early childhood family, parenting groups, working family support groups, Friday nights out, but then eventually you're plugging them into social action. Maybe there's nature walks or hikes that they wanna do with their family, holiday of activities, spiritual offerings, and maybe these are some of our best board members. So it's the idea is again, creating that cross-departmental, cross-agency collaboration. And finally, here's an example of someone coming in as a lecture attendee, talk series, social action, arts literature classes, writing workshops, volunteerism, et cetera. Again, we need to be able to anticipate through building relationships, understanding the values, understanding the interests and plugging them into things that will increase that engagement. All right, so how am I doing with time, Sue? Am I doing all right? We're running a smidge long, but we're okay. I've adjusted. Don't worry. You're good. Okay. So essentially, I'm just going to bring it all home and I'm going to talk about my parents again really quickly. So you've got Susan Myers. These are the things that she's interested in. She's interested in generosity, social action, community creativity, collaboration, health and well being. These are the things that she finds at the JCC that meet her needs. This is holistic engagement, this creates lifelong engagement. You've got my father, Stephen Myers. What a handsome guy. He values leadership, connection with Israel, repairing the world, health and well being, Torah community. These are the things that he can engage with at the JCC that create, that, that engage him on multiple levels. And then finally, you've got me. So leadership, compassion, kindness, social action, repairing the world, interconnectedness, health and well being. I learned all of those values in nursery school at the JCC, I promise you. And then I lived throughout by engaging in the JCC in multiple ways throughout my life. All right, JCCs have so much to offer. We are more than a fitness center. We are more than programs and services. We have the opportunity to create an environment where people feel safe and belong to something that's bigger than themselves, that's bigger than community through meaningful relationships, member experience, the engagement solution, we create lifelong engagement. And remember, as Coretta Scott King said, the greatness of any community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Thank you so much. Now we're gonna turn it over for Q and A. Awesome. So uh, Leslie, if you could stop sharing your screen. I will do that. And then we can, uh, uh, there you go, perfect. Um, and I will try to get myself up there with you if I can. All right, hey, Leslie, how are you? Hey, um, So if you have a question, you could go ahead and write it into chat or use the raise hand feature. We'd love to hear other voices. I'm sure you'd rather hear another voice than mine by this point um, in the session, but. Uh, we'd love to hear you if you're comfortable uh, asking your question out loud, just use the raise hand feature. Um, but I do see a few questions coming in already that I'll read here. What is the AI technology you are using? So we have partnered with Daxco Conversica um, and Exos is providing its own solution that is powered by Conversica. 
So um, that is the solution that we're currently using. Great. Um, and uh, curious minds want to know if you're still a member of your J. Oh, I am not. Because only because that's in Richmond, Virginia, and I live in upstate New York. However, I am a member, still a member of Shames JCC on the Hudson, and my mother is still a member at, at our JCC in Richmond. Very nice. Um, and actually, um, I think it's Alexis, someone from Richmond commented that uh, your mom is still involved there and that they oh. love her dearly. Yes. Awesome. Um, Leslie, you referred to the new staffing model around the member experience team. Can you say a little more about that staffing model? Yeah, so what we've done is we've actually combined our customer service front desk with our membership sales and have created a member experience team. And that's something that doesn't happen overnight. You have to create expectations, job descriptions, you have to hire into these roles. But essentially what we wanna do is we want our front desk staff to have the ability to sell the values of the JCC. And we wanna make sure that our membership representatives are delivering on excellent customer service. So one of the efficiencies that we've had to make over this period of time, when we got small, we had the opportunity to begin to rebuild. And this is one of the areas that we really um, started to rebuild. Great. We have actually uh, a team asking a question. Um, I'm gonna add them in. I've got three names, Jess, Barb, and Julie. Um, I, they might be co-officing. I don't know if you guys are on camera, but uh, we've oh got you goodness, on the I want to be there. Where are you? <laughs> Hi there. Are we on mute? No. No, okay. you're good. We are co-officing outside, I guess. That's awesome. Um, we, were, we basically wanted to ask the same question about the member experience team. Do you have specific? Yeah, I was just curious about, um, you had mentioned that you had Cross department ambassadors, um, and it was a team that worked across all agencies. How did that? How does that work? And what is the purpose of it? Like, I understand the purpose, but how is it then implemented? Where does that person so, come to? Yeah, as well. Yeah. So, so there are two. I can answer your questions in two ways. The first is on site, site specific. Okay. So, um, essentially, what we would do is we would put out. Um, anyone who's interested across the agency that wants to become a member experience ambassador. And we would ask that one person minimally from each department, one person from early childhood, one person from you know, all of our different programs, one person from fitness, one person from lectures, one person from music. And essentially those people would be the ambassadors and the advocates for perpetuating the member experience team. So it's completely voluntary but they help to hold the line and they help to create accountability and they help to train and develop the staff. And that way, the fitness experience is very different than the music experience, than someone just coming in and leaving, on, you know, taking a class or whatever. Um, I oversee multiple sites in my role with Exos. So what we've done is we've created subject matter experts that oversee the member experience initiative for all of our sites. And what I would say is that if you have opportunities to partner with other agencies um, and you know, connect with a person that you feel like would be able to build across agencies, I definitely advocate for that. But um, for us, you know, it's really about making sure that everyone's fully, um, fully immersed in the culture and it has to be across the whole agency. Thank you, Thank you to the team at the Catch J. <laughs> We had another question. I think it was similar to what you were just uh, answering, Leslie. Uh, what's the best way to get the cross departmental, <laughs> to get cross departmentally engaged staff to bring the same level of energy when welcoming members back and making sure the experience for members is consistent across the entire agency? Yeah. So what I want to say is the person that's leading this team has got to pick them and pick them well. You know, we we know that people at our agencies have a variety of levels of engagement themselves, you know, whether it's full-time, part-time or whatever. So the key, if you're gonna build a member experience team, you gotta pick people who are super excited about member experience. You gotta pick people who are really interested in making an impact on a deeper level. And those are the people that you're gonna attract and, and, and bring in. Great. And, oh. Before I get to the next one in writing, I'm going to go to one in person. I've got Manny 
I'm going to add Manny to our screen. Manny, Hi. you're on the line. Hey, Thank Manny. you. Hi. Hi, Leslie. Hi, everyone. Um, monetary, how does that affect? Uh, so there's membership team, and then you said the desk also sells. Um, do they also get rewarded, or is that um, a separate... Yeah, yeah, no, so they, they make the commissions just like member, like the membership team does as well. So um, in a couple of our sites, we have a member experience manager who sells and also oversees customer service. Um, in our sites, at one of our sites in Manhattan, um, they've always had this model because they've had such few, so, such few staff. So they have the people who are checking in at the front desk. Those same people are giving tours and those same people are selling and they make a commission as well. Yeah. Thanks, Manny. And I've got Thanks, Sharon coming in. Sharon, yes, you can unmute you. yourself. I got it, thank you. So yes, you had mentioned early on that um, so many of us experienced furloughs and reduction in staff and, 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 and. So I used to have um, three full-time member services people and a variety of part-time people. And now nobody is full-time, no one, not a single person is full-time. I lost my assistant membership director. So I feel, and we've added um, a check-in for reservations. So my, the staff that I have can't do their normal responsibilities because they're busy answering the phones and checking people in and showing people how to use the app and, and all of those things. So they're feeling a little burned out and a little yeah. stressed because there are so few of them doing so many things. So how would you just start this whole member experience change? Um, where, where would I start? It's such a good question, you know, and I really feel what you're saying. Like I really connect with that and, and you know, the frustration and the burnout and the, um, I think a real sense of helplessness, helplessness and not knowing when it's gonna change or when things are gonna get back to normal. Like it's different to have one thing happen and to know that it's gonna get back, but to not know uh, when we're gonna be able to hire stuff back. I think that's really, that's really um, true. I would say that introducing the concept is the first place to start, right? So I think that for me, it always helps me to, Think about the concept, think about building it out. And it might be one of your full-time managers that has to own this. And so building out what the experience looks like with the participation of the part-time staff. Um, but then I think that it's just like creating a North Star. Ultimately, where do you want to get to be within six months? And what is staffing going to look like? I imagine we're all working on budgeting right now. You know, So like, what is it going to look like in six months from now? What's it going to look like in a year from now? and then charting your journey there. You might have people that are generalists right now, but are not, uh, they're not utilizing their skills. And you might have people who are getting paid way too much for doing other things that maybe they shouldn't get as pay paid as well for, right? Because everyone's become generalists at this point. So I think that the first thing is creating, charting the journey, defining what the job descriptions should like look like, and then being able to chart that way. Maybe you would list positions and you have to have people who um, decide to apply for those positions because those responsibilities are new. Um, and so I think, I think all of it is just uh, clearly identifying and then moving it, moving it forward. And Sharon, I'm happy to talk with you offline a little bit more about some of the things that we've done in order to get that transition pretty seamless. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sharon. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna actually get two quick questions that are connected as our last question in this section so we can move on. And there's still some questions in chat, Leslie. So maybe we could address some of these during the breakouts and, and, and find a way to address them uh, either in chat or later. But Great. two quickies are about the AI tool. Is yeah. it compatible with Daxco's club automation member management system? Question one. And two, does it integrate with Salesforce? Question yes two. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. So um, because Daxco and Conversica have a partnership, it is being rolled out through Daxco as well. So that is the, that is the preferred vendor. Um, we do have a site um, that is Salesforce driven and it also does work with Salesforce and it's compatible. compatible. If you do have a software where it's not compatible 
it's actually quite easy. You're simply exporting and importing into the system. And again, you know, I have some vendor hours later today and on Thursday, and I'm happy to talk a little bit more specifically about how this works. That's great. Thanks, Leslie. So we're going to actually pivot and dive into the next section. We're going to come back to Leslie, so don't worry. Um, we're not done yet, um, but we're going to give everyone a chance to engage with one another, uh, reflect on what you've heard from Leslie, and apply it to your own experience. So Cindy's going to put into chat a couple of questions uh, for the breakouts to discuss, and there's going to be different breakouts than before. Uh, we're going to first focus on building meaningful relationships. We're, we're going to ask each person to reflect on uh, a story about a favorite member and also to talk about a compassionate act that you took to help someone at your JCC. And, and we're, we, again, we have small groups, so hopefully everyone will have a chance to share in, uh, in about eight minutes. We're going to be in these groups, so about two minutes per person in order to share on those two questions. Um, again, if you need a change of group, come, come back to the main room and we'll reassign you. But otherwise, I'm going to send you off into some small breakout rooms for eight minutes with those two questions. Let me just double check that they're, yep, they're, they're in chat. So you guys are all good to go. And we'll see you back in eight minutes. So right. I, um, I have a slide on here with the virtual vendor hours, too. I don't know if you want me to show that, but just if you do, or you can put that in the chat either way. Sure. All right, everyone's back. The floor is yours, Leslie. So how was that for everyone? Um, we have a few minutes. I don't know if we wanted to just take maybe Sue, maybe one or two people who want to share um, about member experience. I think we have time maybe for, for a couple people. Does anyone want to share something from your group? And raise your hand if you'd like to share. Ooh. Quiet group. Oh, we have our trio yeah. from uh, South Jersey. Uh -huh. <laughs> Excellent. Hi there. Um, I just shared this in our small group, but I thought that it was really important. Um, about a month or so ago, I had a woman that came into our facility at the end of the day. Um, you know, you're exhausted at the end of the day and you just don't want to do a tour, but it is what it is. So you go out and I was given my little bit of mustard that I had left. Um, and very quickly, I realized that she really just would needed someone to speak to. She needed someone to talk to. And she was telling me that she had very recently lost her husband to COVID and she was truly devastated and she was trying to figure out how to live life. She wasn't sure what to do, number one, in the middle of a pandemic, but also losing her husband after years you know, of having a partner. She wasn't sure how to move forward. Um, and so very quickly, I also realized that this was not about selling a membership at all. This was about having someone feel heard and seen yeah. and understood. And so I, she cried and I cried and I shared with her that I had also lost someone. So we spoke together kind of about how we felt and I encouraged her and, you know, I asked her if she was double vaccinated and I ended up going out and giving her a hug because I felt like that was super important. And then at the end, she just told me how important she felt like she felt really understood and she felt really loved in that moment and that we were really kind and then the next day she came back and, and she purchased a membership without any tour or knowing anything that we do and now she had she's plugged into our adult department and she's really thriving here so you know that's just something that you had stated where it's more than a sale it's so powerful i mean what a beautiful story and amazing you know, well, well done for you to connect and to create an opportunity for her to be able to share that way. We are not selling memberships. That should not be our goal. Our goal is that we are promoting a place of safety and belonging and connection. And that's what I mean, the difference between a transaction of this is a sale and you are a membership unit and you are this and you are that, to like, this is a human being in front of you. And like, the purpose is for them to find a place of connection. I mean, I imagine she probably couldn't have shared that with anybody else except in that moment with you. So well done. That's really beautiful. Thank you. 
And the, the best part is I just want to add that. Am I still on a mute? You're, okay. you're good. You're is good. that I actually use Dax Go Engage. So I have her tagged. So I can see, I get an email when she's in the facility. So I'm able to kind of check in with her. And, um, you know, I just call, I've called her a few times just to make sure that she's okay and to see if she needs anything. But it's nice to develop those relationships. Absolutely. And just think about taking it one step further. So it's like when there's, when your JCC opens fully or other programs come up and you think, all right, like what would be really wonderful for this person right now to be a part of? And then you call that person and say, wow, like, there's this program, which is a support group for people who have lost people during this period of time that I think you would be really, you know, really good for you, right? So it's like taking it even a step further. It's like, how do you plug that person into other relationships or other areas? Well done. Thank you. That's really good info. Good. Does anybody else? Thanks. Well, actually, let's see if we're going to uh, do the yeah. other breakout, we should probably meddle into five it. minutes to do that. But let's let's go ahead and give folks uh, a chance to to share with the small groups one more time. So we're going to go back into uh, we're going to go back into breakouts and we're going to uh, dive into the member experience now. Cindy's going to put two questions in chat. You'll probably just have time to do one. And I would encourage you to lean into the one that is about what are two things you will do to enhance the member experience at your J. And you could go round robin really quick. Uh, if you have five people in your group and you each share two, everyone's gonna walk away with eight ideas. So what two things will you do to enhance the member experience? Um, five minute speed round sharing uh, and enjoy, away you go. All right, welcome back. Welcome back everyone. I hope that was meaningful even though it was brief. Yeah, Since we won't have time to time. debrief, I invite you to put any I know, I know, I'm sorry. But you know what, we're gonna to be together again tomorrow so we can continue some of these dialogues. And I invite you to put in chat ideas that came up from your group about um, uh, how to enhance the member experience. Go ahead and let's, let's start populating the chat with those great ideas because then you're able, we're able to benefit from more and more and more uh, great ideas. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel on these things. Um, so in deference to time, I'm going to need to uh, kind of finish us here. Um, gratitude to Leslie for a tremendous presentation. Obviously, we could have kept going for probably another hour. Um, and I invite you, I invite everyone or anyone to continue the conversation with Leslie in the live uh, virtual vendor hall that starts at 4 p.m. today Eastern. You could also connect with Leslie through the platform. If you visit either Leslie directly as a Leslie Myers as a participant, or you could go through the Exos um, sponsor page, and uh, her contact information is there as well. So tremendous gratitude, Leslie. Thank you so very very much. Such um, a pleasure. Thank you everybody and, for your participation. Thank you. And uh, gratitude again to Jody for our opening. Um, a reminder that our next peer community session is tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. Same as today, you connect to it through the platform. Um, and uh, as I just said, our live vendor hall starts in a half hour. Um, same thing, you go into the platform and you could link on as many different vendors as you wanna visit. So there's an hour, you could pop in and out meet a few people, talk to a few people, have a dialogue with Leslie or anybody else and maximize that time. And I really, really encourage you to spend at least some time within that hour visiting some of our sponsors who have been so generous to us. If you have a trusted advising session, those also start, perhaps you have one today at four o'clock, you should have gotten a direct link from your advisor. And the last announcement for today is that JCC Cares, our first ever continental wide service opportunity will take place at 5.15 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, it's a tremendous opportunity to feel the power of our movement in partnership with Repair the World. We're gonna have two service opportunities, one with neighborhood Neighbor Network and one with VAX Volunteers. You could choose to do online research for VAX Volunteers, or you could choose to make personal calls with Neighbor Network, and you'll have your, your option to do either one of those Come join us for what will be a really powerful, meaningful time this afternoon. That's 515 Eastern and same thing, you can link to it through the platform. Beyond that, 
Thank you so much for the last 90 minutes, a tremendously inspiring time together. And I look forward to seeing you all and perhaps many more people tomorrow when we regroup for our next membership session.